He said, on the bed so you can see everything moving. God, I need a professional setup. I'm just a mess. Slippers are falling off. My pants are too big. Ugh. I just want to play Minecraft. Okay. Hello everybody, Natalia here, and I am super excited because I got tagged again. This is the second video I have been tagged for, and it feels so good to not have to go out and find tag videos anymore. I had to do that for so long, and now I actually get tagged, and it's just so nice. But anyway, uh, Clara over at Clara Reads Books tagged me in the Rapid Fire book tag. Uh, her channel is phenomenal. I definitely recommend you check it out if you haven't already. I will link her down below. Uh, I will also link the creator of the original Rapid Fire book tag video. Her channel will be down below as well, and let's go ahead and get started. So I think the whole purpose of this Rapid Fire book tag is I read the question, which I have not gone through since watching Clara's videos, so I don't remember what all of them are. There are quite a few, if I recall correctly. Uh, so each one I go through, I'm going to try to answer as quickly as possible without putting too much thought into it. All right, let's get started. All right, so question number one is ebook or physical book? I would have said physical book if you asked me a couple of years ago, but I actually really, really love ebooks now. And the reason for this is that I like to rent books from the library, so it's super easy to just plug my Kindle into my computer, go onto the library, download a few books, and then just get to reading. And also, it saves me money because I am somebody who never returns books to the library on time, and then I always rack up fines. And then once I hit $10 in fines, I have to pay it back before I can rent any more books. So the library has chewed up a lot of my money. So I would say ebook. All right, question two is hardback book or paperback book? Paperback or hardback? Oh my gosh. Um, if they're going to be sitting up on my shelf, then I would definitely say hardback because I think they look so nice. They look so classy on a shelf. Uh, but if I'm going to be reading them, I would probably say paperback because I'm not afraid, as afraid of opening and closing the cover. I can kind of fold it and hold it and roll it and just make sure that it's a really comfortable read. Uh, so if I'm reading, then paperback. If I just have it on my shelf, then definitely a hardback. Question three is online or in-store book shopping. If I'm out shopping for books, definitely in-store. I love to browse. I don't like to just go on a website and fill my virtual cart. Um, I do love getting packages, but I would still prefer to actually go to a bookstore, get something nice and warm to drink, wander around, touch the books, look at them, smell the books. You know, I want the entire experience of actually shopping for the books before I buy them. Question four is trilogies or series? Uh, I love trilogies. I feel like they happen a lot in the kind of young adult dystopian fantasy kind of genre, which tends to be my favorite genre. So I really, really love trilogies. Uh, and then if... If a series gets too long, I usually lose interest after a while. I'm not very good at seeing things all the way through to the end. I'm the same when it comes to video games and like shows that I watch. I'll be really, really into it for a while and then I'll stop watching halfway through and then never make it to the end. So I would have to say trilogies. Question five is heroes or villains? You know, this just depends on each individual author. I can't say one way or the next because it really depends on how each author builds up and develops their heroes and their villains. But I think probably for the most part, if I had to answer this, I would say heroes because they are the ones that we're typically following through every book. Um, I know that there are books out there. I want to say there's one by Marie Lu, uh, and that book is about kind of the villainous character. She has like one eye or a patch or something. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what book that is? Because isn't she the villain? But she's also like our our protagonist. Anyway, I'm, I guess I'm going to have to say hero because they're typically our protagonist and usually the one that I get to spend the most time with. Next question. Question six is a book you want everyone to read. Um, well, my books, of course, but if those don't count, then I would definitely say the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. Hands down, the best trilogy I have ever read. Hunger Games, amazing. Divergent, uh, Divergent was good and then it went downhill from there. Uh, what other awesome trilogies are out there I can't recall right now, but the Daughter of Smoke and Bone, I feel like gets a lot less hype than some of the other trilogies, especially the ones that have films out right now. But that series is so phenomenal. Made me laugh, made me cry. I, I just love it so much. The Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Definitely go and read that. 
Question number seven is recommend an underrated book. That, that was like a tongue twister. Recommend an underrated book. There we go. Uh, now, the book that I'm going to recommend isn't necessarily an underrated book in the sphere of literature, but I feel like on BookTube it's underrated. I haven't really seen any of the big BookTubers talk about it at all on YouTube. Um, and it's the book that I mentioned in my previous video by, by Iron Daddy Roy, and it is called The God of Small Things. Uh, it's not really young adult. It's definitely an adult novel. I read it in my uh, women's literature class my last year of university, and it's beautiful. It tackles a lot of mature adult themes. Uh, it's not an easy book to get through, but definitely one that I think is worth sitting down and spending some time with. That author hasn't written anything since. Uh, I feel like it was that case of her just knowing that she had this heart story that she needed to get out and now she hasn't written out anything afterward. But it's definitely a phenomenal, very touching book and I absolutely recommend you go and read it. Question eight is the last book you finished and that was Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. Love it. My, my really good friend Amy gave it to me. So thank you, Amy, especially if you're watching this. <laughs> Question... Nine is the last book you bought. Uh, I bought two books from Goodwill, uh, both by David Clement Davies, and that was Firebringer and Fell, I believe. Question 10, weirdest thing you have used for a bookmark? How do I even remember that? I literally just use anything that's sitting around me. Like, I would use a hair tie. Oh, there's some hair in that. I would literally put like a thing in my book. Like I would put this bag like in the corner of my book and just close it and leave it like that. I can't remember one weird thing I've used though because I've used so many weird things. So sorry guys. Question 11 is used books, yes or no? Absolutely yes. Question 12, uh, your top three favorite genres. Why did I forget already? Dystopian, contemporary, and paranormal. Typically within the young adult kind of umbrella term. Question 13 is borrow or buy? This is a funny one because I feel like most people are going to say buy, but I'm definitely borrow. Uh, I am moving toward a minimalistic lifestyle, which means I don't want a bunch of things. I want to travel a lot, move around a lot. I want to have a tiny house, which means that having a bunch of books everywhere isn't really going to work for me. Um, I'm also not somebody who rereads books very often, which means if I have 500 books on my shelves that I'm never going to read again, and all they do is sit there and look nice, I would much rather give those books away and let other people enjoy them. Uh, so like I said earlier on in this video, I'm a big library goer. Um, I love to rent books from the library. I love to get books from, you know, I will buy books from like Goodwill and stuff, but when I'm done reading them, I typically send them back. I don't like to keep them with me. So I would prefer to borrow books if I had a choice. Unless, here, here is the, the one exception. Here's the one exception is when I am buying a book specifically for an author to sign it for me. Um, if it's going to be personalized like that, then it's different. For example, um, I bought the hardback version of The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater. I pre-ordered it, so she actually drew in it for me, and then I went to her Raven tour. Yeah, I went to her Raven King tour, and she signed it for me, and then she also signed the Scorpio Races. So those are two books that I will never give up because they're so personalized. But again, like random books that I just have sitting around that aren't really connected to me and don't mean much to me, I have no use for them. I'd rather get rid of them and then just get like ebooks or something and read those. All right, question 14. I did the right hand that time. It's... Anyway, um, characters or plot? Definitely characters. I love character-driven novels. Um, I feel like what I write is character-driven. Everything is just character for me. If it's a really intense, complex plot, but the characters are just kind of drifting through and I'm not connected to them, then I don't care about it at all. It definitely has to be strong characters and a character-driven story. Question 15 is long or short books. Uh, can I say like medium-sized books? I don't want like a 60,000 word book unless it's a contemporary or something. But I would have to say short books because like I said earlier, sometimes I have problems getting through things and seeing things all the way through to the end. So if it's a super long book, then I'm going to struggle with it more than if it's a shorter book. And I will definitely be able to get through the short book in like a day or two. So short books. Um, question 16. 
15 is long or short chapters. Um, I don't have an answer for this because each chapter needs to have its own arc and it needs to be complete and have its own little storyline. Um, and sometimes that's extremely short. Sometimes ex it's extremely long. Some of my favorite authors, I, I read chapters that are literally a word or a sentence. So it doesn't matter to me length of chapters. It's, you know, the length of the, chap the chapter just depends on what the book needs at that point. Question 17 is name the first three books you think of. All right, this is easy. Way of Spears, Highborn, and Twilight. Question 18 is books that make you laugh or cry. Um, I would say books that make me cry because it's not that often that I connect with a book on such a deep level that I have that much care for the characters. In most books, I can I can kind of laugh and giggle at, at something that the characters do or say, but that doesn't mean that I'm very, very connected to it. If a book can make me cry, like uh, The Daughter of Smoke and Bone, it, that definitely made me cry. That goes to show that it's a book that completely has me entrapped in the story and the lives of the characters. So definitely books that can make me cry. Question 19 is our world or fictional worlds? This is a tough one and it's kind of, it's kind of deep to think about because most of the time I would say, most of the time I would say fictional world. I mean, why, why do we read? Why do we write? It's usually to escape the mundane and escape our reality and our real world. But at the same time, I have to go out and find things in the real world that, that make me feel alive. Uh, I don't think it's healthy to always want to exist in a fictional world because it's unattainable. We'll never actually see or touch those characters or those places or see the things that are happening in those books. You know, it's the same with movies and video games. We get so lost in these fictional worlds that we forget to go out into our world and actually live. Even though I think fictional worlds are typically more exciting than our own, uh, I would still have to say reality because we have to go out and find our own excitement and make our own happiness and exist and actually live. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Question 20 is audiobooks, yes or no? I have listened to audiobooks, but I do not like them all that much. Um, they were nice when I had to read a lot of books for my university classes because I could just turn on the audiobook and then do chores around the house or clean or do whatever I needed to do. Um, so that was nice because I could be listening to it while also doing other things. But if it is a book that I actually really care about and I really want to read and know more about, then I would say no to the audiobook. Um, I listened to Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. That was the first audiobook I listened to. And I literally had to late, like turn my speakers all the way up on my computer because that's where I was listening to it on. That's what I was listening to it on. And I had to, to lie back on my couch close my eyes and just focus on what the audiobook was saying. And that's extremely like that. That's not any fun. Why would I just lay there with my eyes closed when I could actually be reading the book and carrying it around with me instead? So I definitely prefer actual books over audiobooks. Question 21. Do you ever judge books by their cover? Absolutely 100% all the time. The cover is what's going to market the book to people that want to buy it. So it needs to be a strong, convincing, beautiful, powerful cover. Uh, so definitely, I, I always, always judge books by their cover. Question 22 is book to movie or book to... TV adaptations. I haven't seen any good book to TV adaptations of the books that I like. Um, I, I know that they're out there, but I haven't watched them. So I would certainly say book to movie adaptations. Question 23 is a movie or TV show that you preferred to its book? Uh, Maze Runner and Scorch Trials. I wasn't crazy about the books. Um, I liked them, but there was something about the way that was written that didn't really work for me. But the movies are phenomenal. I absolutely love them. I mean, in Scorch Trials, it's like there isn't even that much dialogue, but there is so much action and so much going on that it just, it's such an awesome action movie. I absolutely love it. So Maze Runner and Scorch Trials, I enjoyed the movies way more than the books. And then the final question, question 24, is series or standalones? At this point in my life, I'm going to say standalones because I'm not reading a lot right now. And if I start a series, it's not very likely that I will finish it. 
So right now I'm going to say standalones, but a few years back when I was at the height of my reading kind of peak, then I would definitely say series. Oh my gosh, that is all of them. I have been sitting like with my knees bent and on my feet and my feet are completely numb. Ugh. They're so asleep. Look, I can't even like... Oh, I have monkey socks. I can't even flex. Oh, oh. <laughs> look. I'm trying to flex my foot. It's just falling because it's so asleep. Come on. Wake up. That was the rapid fire book tag. Clara, thank you so much for tagging me. I had a wonderful time. Uh, who am I going to tag? You know, again, I think I'm going to tag two of the people that I tagged in my last video. That's going to be Kelsey Lee over at the Scribbled Bookcase and then also Tamara Woods. I love your videos and I would love to see your take on this. So if you guys make your own tag video, please let me know. I would really love to see it. Thank you all for watching and I will be making another video soon. All right, bye.